Go to Luke chapter number 10. Go to Luke 10. That's going to be our subject today, finding that peace, gaining freedom from worry. You remember the story of, uh, as you turn to Luke 10, you remember the story of the resurrection of Lazarus. He had been dead for four days, and Christ brought him back to life. Well, Lazarus had two sisters. Can anybody remember their names? Mary and what? Martha, Mary and Martha, not Mary, the mother of Jesus, different Mary. Mary was a common name. These two are the sisters of a young man by the name of Lazarus that Jesus resurrected. It appears that the two sisters were very different in their temperament. Does anyone in here got a sibling and you're an opposite? Anyone in here, you're an opposite of your brother or sister? Your personalities are opposites. Come on, how, let's see how many. All right, I got one brother. We're, we're that way. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's not always a bad thing. Mary was a very, uh, just to kind of let you know how they both are, it appears in Scripture Mary was a very quiet, very relaxed, very meditative lady. Martha was an activist. Uh, she was a type A. She was server, doer, always on the go. To use a modern term, Martha seemed a bit obsessive compulsive. Can anybody identify with that? She was wound tight. Um, both of them, though, I do want to emphasize this. Please don't miss this. Both were wonderful ladies, and they were followers of Jesus Christ. In fact, Martha received Christ into her house. Look at verse number 38. It says, verse 38 begins our story today. Now, it came to pass as they went that he, Jesus, entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him, Jesus, into her house. Can you imagine having Jesus in your house? Would any of you get nervous if I told you Jesus was coming home for lunch today at your house? I mean, imagine that, right? And so, you know, Martha just opens up her house to Jesus. A lot of times Martha gets a bad rap, and we're going to see why in the story here in a moment. But I do want to emphasize something to balance that out. Martha loved Jesus Christ. In fact, she believed in Christ, and one of the greatest statements that was ever said to Christ was made by Martha. He said to her, after her brother died, Lazarus, Jesus said, Martha, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? If you live and believe in me, you'll never die. Do you believe that? Martha answered him, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe that you are the Christ and you are the Son of God which should come into the world. So she was a believer and, and she opened up her house and her heart to Christ. Today, Jesus Christ stands at your door. Not your literal door like, like this right here. He's not at your, your house door, okay, like this. But did you know the Bible says that today we are God's house? Today, God comes and lives in us. Today, the Bible says in Revelation 3, Jesus is knocking on your heart's door. And he wants you, only you can open it up. He wants you to open up your heart's door. Picture a door on your heart. And he wants you to open up that door. And he wants you to invite Jesus Christ to come in to your life, into your heart, into your very being. And Jesus Christ wants you. Martha opened up her house to the Lord, but today we're his house. So have you opened up your heart's door to him? Martha was a great lady, but Martha had an issue. Martha had an issue. Um, by the way, how many of us have issues? <laughs> Man, we all got issues. Some of us multiple ones, amen. And, and Martha, Martha had an issue too. And Jesus pegs what it is. Look at verse number 40. It says, but Martha was cumbered about much serving. She came to him and she said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, tell her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and he said unto her, Martha, Martha. He says, you're careful and troubled about many things. In your handout, it says careful and troubled. Those two words mean that she was full of anxiety and stress. She was stressed out. She was wound up tight. She was very restless in her inner spirit. She had, in modern day, I guess what we would say today, she was a worry wart. Does anybody in here know anyone that's a worry wart? 
She was a worrywart. Um, what's the lesson that we learn from this? Well, even believers that know Christ, I mean, he's in the house right here. Even believers that know Christ can still struggle with worry, anxiety, and stress. Jesus was in Martha's house. And, you know, I've got a chair up here, and I've got this chair here on purpose because I want that chair to, I want you to imagine for a moment Jesus Christ sitting in that chair. That's literally what he was doing. He was sitting in a chair in Martha's living room of her house. And I want you to imagine Jesus Christ sitting in that chair right now. I want you to imagine that in your mind. And Jesus Christ was in the house, but Martha was still stressed out. Christ may be in the house. He may be in you, in other words. But that is still not a guarantee that you are going to experience daily inner peace. We can have Jesus in our heart and still be a mess on the inside, and we can have inner turmoil. This text is going to give us insight into how to gain freedom from worry. You can see from our banners that our theme in July has been this idea of freedom. And we've talked about freedom and different aspects of freedom. And today I kind of want to focus on our inside. I want to focus on that inner part of us that brings that worry, that stress, that anxiety, that fear in our life, like we saw in the video, that, that kind of leads us away from that sweet peace that God wants us to have. And really, to be honest with you, it just boils down to choices that we make in our everyday life. Um, it, look at verse 42 real quick. Look at verse 42. Jesus said to Martha, one thing is needful, Martha, and Mary, that's her sister, Mary has chosen that good part. Now go back there again and look at that. Mary has what? Chosen that good part. Life boils down to choices. Okay? If, and that's good because if you're not happy with your life right now and you don't like the way you are, in other words, you're, you feel like you are just an internal wreck. The good news is you can make choices to change that. Can I get an amen, huh? You, you can make choices that can change that. And the good news is, is that this internal peace and this freedom from worry has really nothing to do with your spouse. It has nothing to do with your kids. It has nothing to do with the boss at work you can't stand. It has nothing to do with the coworkers that are driving you crazy or friends that have turned on you. This is something you have control over. You can make choices like Mary did. What were the choices Mary made? Why did she have such peace and Martha was just so full of careful and troubled about many things? That you know, why why is that? Why? When it says that she was careful, that doesn't mean like you're careful crossing the street. It's an old English word that means that she was full of anxiety. She was full of anxiety. She was stressed out. Well, what did Mary choose that was different than Martha that led to peace? Number one is this in your handout, is that Mary made a choice to worship Christ before serving Christ. Now, if you're in the balcony or if you're on the main floor, I really hope you'll zone in on this. Because this is so important what we're going to share. I'm going to share some principles with you from this story that have the ability and the power to truly revolutionize your life and, and, the, and, and revolutionize you on the inside. You see, Mary made a choice. Mary made a choice that she was going to worship Christ before serving Christ. There's one verse I didn't read yet. Go to verse 39. That's the one verse I didn't read. Did you notice that? Verse 39. It says that she, Martha, had a sister called what? Mary. Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet. So I want you to get the picture with me again. Please go back in your mind in time. This is real events that really happened. Jesus Christ is in the house. He's sitting in a chair in the living room, and Mary comes and she gets on the floor. Anybody in here like to sit on the floor? Anybody? You like the floor? Okay. She gets on the floor, and she is literally in awe of Christ. I mean, she's in awe of him. She is just uh, awestruck. She is, she is captivated by him. She is at his feet worshiping Jesus Christ. I, I mean, 
She doesn't want to be anywhere else but there. That's where she wants to be. Yeah, she's like, yeah, I know we got to get supper prepared. Yep, I know eventually we got to eat. But nothing is more important right now than worshiping Jesus Christ and simply adoring him. Mary had inner peace. She was like the eye of the hurricane, right? You know how the eye is of a hurricane. We know about hurricanes in Florida, don't we? And the eye of the hurricane, there's peace, there's tranquility. She was like the eye of the hurricane. Martha was like the hurricane, <laughs> right? Martha's like the hurricane. She's, she's like, a, like a ball of fire, right? She's, she's, you know, hustling, bustling all around. I want you to get a statement in your handout why Mary had such peace. Here we go. You ready? Get this statement. It says, our service unto Christ, which is important. Martha was serving. Our service unto Christ should come forth from our daily worship of Christ. But our service should not replace our daily worship in communion with Christ. And that is exactly what I see happen many times. Hear me now. I see people that they get saved and they come to know the Lord, and that's an exciting time. If you're not a Christian today, please, I beg of you, consider becoming a Christian today. There is nothing like knowing the Lord. Amen, church? I mean, it's an awesome thing to know Christ. And if you don't know him, we'll be glad to show you how you can know him today. Come see us after the service in the hospitality room. We will share with you how you can know Christ. But I know how it was when I got saved. When you come to know the Lord and you become a Christian... You just want to serve. You want to find a way to give back to the Lord. That's natural. You just want to do stuff for Him. And I see new Christians many times, and older Christians, that they just want to serve, 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 go, 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 do, do, do. And we get so busy serving our families, serving up at the church, you know, serving our, our kids, and, you know, maybe working a job on top of all that, serving there. And we get so busy that what happens is we think that our doing for Christ makes up for our lack of prayer and our lack of communion with Christ. Our doing for Christ, we think, makes up for our lack of communion with Christ. So my question is, on this first point, how much time do you spend daily at his feet? Now, you understand that I mean allegorically there because we, we, don't, we don't have that privilege like Mary did to literally be at his feet, at his physical feet, but yet the Bible does teach that because of Jesus, we can enter right into his throne room and we can commune with him today. How much time do you spend at his feet? In other words, how much time do you spend talking to him? It's that daily worship and that, it's that daily communion with him uh, that, that's going to anchor your soul, that's going to help you to be worry-free. Listen, it's, it, it, it's, that, it's that daily, uh, some people call it their quiet time. Now, I like that term, personally. I like that because that's what it should be. Your quiet time means that you've got a place set aside somewhere. Maybe it's your office. Maybe it's the back porch. Maybe it's the front porch. Maybe it's a swing in the backyard. Maybe it's your sewing room. Maybe it's a shed in the back. But you've got a place where you go every day and you talk to the Lord. You commune with Him. You go through those different things that we talked about last month about prayer and you go through those different areas, and it's that quiet time. It's that time for you to just do like Mary and just meditate upon him and think about him and talk to him. Now, listen, it is that quiet time every day that provides you an inner compass that allows you to navigate worry-free through the daily chores and the daily responsibilities of life. Why? Because you know he's with you in those things. You've spent time at his feet. You know he's with you. So your foundation is there for that day. And you're, you're not full of restlessness. And you're not full of stress. Why? Because you've spent time with him. You cannot just serve all the time without worship. You cannot just serve. You know, sometimes we're involved in, you know, 20 ministries at the church, and people just can't say no, and they're involved in this area and that area, and they're going, and they're doing, and we're doing this and doing that, and we're so busy in our life serving all the time. You can't continue that way without worship, because if you do that, if you try to serve without worshiping first, you will burn out eventually. 
not only will you burn out, you won't be much fun to be around. You won't be much fun to be around. You'll be like a porcupine Christian. Amen? Yeah, you'll be like a porcupine Christian. People aren't going to want to be around you if you're serving without worshiping. You've got to have that as part of your daily life if you want to overcome worry. The second thing is this. Number two, Mary made a choice to not only worship before serving, she made a choice to hear Christ's voice above all others. I want you to go again now to verse 39. Verse number 39. Look at it with me. It says, And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet. We just talked about that, worship. And then notice it says, and, say the last three words with me, heard his word. So imagine this with me, that, that Mary comes, and she, she comes here, and she kneels down, and she's like this, all right? Imagine Jesus is in the chair, and he's talking. The Bible says that she heard his word. She's hanging on every word he's saying. She is listening to the teaching that, she, that he is giving out. And, of course, we have that opportunity to do that today through his word. And so she's, she's sitting here taking it, drinking it all in, and she's not hearing anything else. There's other voices there. We know Martha is upset. We know Martha wants her to come help. She doesn't hear Martha. She doesn't hear the disciples. Maybe they're having conversations in the house. She doesn't hear anything else other than Jesus Christ. Martha, on the other hand, was very exasperated, and she must have tried to come over here and get Mary's attention. Mary, Mary, come out, Mary, Mary, you know. And, and she's trying to get Mary away from Jesus, but Mary is so zoned in on Jesus, she's not hearing her sister back here barking, right? So, so Martha finally makes a scene. Look at verse number 40. It says, but Martha was cumbered about much serving. Verse 40. And she came to him. She came to Jesus. She said, Lord, don't you care that my sisters left me to serve alone? Bitter, tell her. She's bossing Jesus around here. <laughs> Tell her, therefore, that she helped me. I mean, Martha, bless her heart. You know? I mean, get, get the picture here, all right? She's probably back here in the kitchen. She's tried to get, Mary, you need to come help. You know, she's going, Mary, you need to come help me. You know? And then, so finally, she just comes, you know, you know busting in. Lord, don't you care that, that, that I'm having to do all this alone? Tell her to help. And you know what? Her frustration just boils over, and she ends up embarrassing herself. Anybody in here ever done that? Anybody besides me? I'm looking for hands. <laughs> I'm looking for hands. Ah, you get so frustrated. You're so full of stress. You're so wired up, man, you just end up, you know, just busting through and just making a fool of yourself, just, just saying things you shouldn't say, embarrassing yourself. <sighs> That's what she did. But meanwhile, you got Mary, and Mary decided she was going to hear Christ's voice above all others. The eternal Word of God, Jesus, is in the house speaking. Yet Martha's worried about household chores, you know. With, and by the way, that's not a word we use a lot. It says Martha was cumbered about much serving. Um, what does that mean, cumbered? In your handout, I gave you the definition. Look at it with me. It says that cumbered means to, to drag all around, to distract. It means to drag all around and to distract. So you get the picture, right? Mary is listening. Question. Look up here. Question. Is Mary distracted? No. Is Martha distracted? Yes. 
Is it easy to get distracted? Yes. Come on, be honest. Is it easy to get distracted in your daily life? Yes. yes. It's easy to get distracted, right? Because you've got all these competing voices out there telling you things. Martha's like hearing these voices, right? Martha's hearing these voices. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to have this done. This needs to be cooked. This needs to be cleaned. This isn't right. You've got to fix this. And Martha is distracted from something that she should be embracing, Jesus. And it is so easy to get distracted. This world out there <laughs> got a lot of shiny bells and whistles that tells you you have to look this way. And people get all stressed out. Am I in fashion? Am I in, is this in style? And the world says, you got to be in style. you gotta, you got to look this way. Your hair has to look this way, and, and you have to dress this way, and you got to have this brand on your clothes, and you got to have this, and you, and you got to do this if people are going to think you're cool, you know. And, and you got to have this, man. If you don't have this, people aren't going to think you're very cool, man. you got to have. And, and you got all these voices out there trying to tell you what you got to have, what you need to do. <laughs> and those with money... And those with power, they sit in corporate boardrooms as we speak, and they're trying to think of ways to extract more money from the regular Joe schmucks of the world like us. And they got these big advertising budgets and sports celebrities touting it, and these companies all play us for suckers, right? They know it doesn't take much persuading for us to follow the lure and buy whatever they're selling. And they appeal to our vanity and to our insecurities and to our desire to look better than our coworkers and look better than our neighbors. But do you take time to listen to Christ's voice? You got all these voices. Are you listening to Christ's voice? Do you know what God... Listen, do you know what God is most concerned about with you? It is not the make and model of your vehicle. He don't care. It is not your electronic gadgets or the, the, the screen size of your TV. It's not what kind of phone you have. He don't care. He doesn't care how fat your bank account is. He is concerned about his relationship with you, period. God is concerned about his relationship with you. Seeking Christ has to become first in your life. Put first things first. Otherwise, we get turned around in our thinking. Didn't Martha get turned around? She comes busting in. She, she, she says, Lord, she says, uh, you, don't you care that my sisters left me alone to serve? You know, she didn't think the Lord cared about her. Did the Lord care about her? Yeah. Had she been listening to his voice beside her sister there, she'd have known how much he cared. Then she got her eyes on her sister and she became very upset with her. And she said to Jesus, tell her to help. What do we learn from that set of events? When you aren't listening to Christ's voice on a daily basis through his word, and this is, this is Christ's voice today. We know he's not going to literally come into your house and start talking, but he said everything we need to know right here. Amen, church? Everything you need to know Jesus has to tell you is right here. You've got it. If you got a copy of the Bible, you've got Christ's words to you. But when we aren't listening to Christ's voice, just like Martha, guess what we do? We begin to look at people, which is usually discouraging. Then we get a critical spirit like Martha did. We get a real critical spirit of other people. And that's so unbecoming. Just like with Martha, you know, it's so unbecoming when we get critical of other people. Then we get a martyr's complex like Martha. Woe is me. I have it so hard. Nobody cares. Nobody else helps. Nobody works as hard as I do. <laughs> then we begin to pour our lives into things of no eternal consequence, and we miss out on great blessings. Think about what Martha missed. All of this leads to stress and worry. When we make a decision to not worship Christ, to not listen to his voice, and we're listening to all these other voices out there in the world, internal distress is going to be the result, period. It's going to be the result. 
Number three, last point, and we're done. Look at number three. I'm going to bring out one more point. We're talking about choices Mary made. Mary made a choice to worship before serving. She made a choice to listen to Christ's voice above all others. But number three, Mary made a choice to place her priority on relationships. I want you to look again, church, at verse number 40. Can you do that? Look at verse number 40 with me. It says, but Martha was cumbered about much serving. That phrase, much serving, is the Greek word diakonia, and it's where we get the English word for deacon. Paul used that same word that's used for much serving. Paul used that same word 21 times writing to the churches. Every time he used it, it was in a positive sense. What's my point? There's absolutely nothing wrong with what Martha's doing. She is serving and ministering for Jesus. The problem is not her performance. It's her priority. Her serving actually caused her to lose focus on what should have been her number one priority. Do you think that ever happens in our lives? We're doing good things. A husband works really hard to provide for his family. Hey, should a husband provide for his family? Yes. But you know what? When that happens to the neglect of his family, to where he's never at his kids' ball games, he can never play catch with his son, he can never beat his girl's dance recital, he can never be at the band concert, he's never there to talk to his kids, spend any time with them. Something that's good can become bad. Why? It's just priorities. It's a priority issue. Mary, though, she got it right. Her priorities were right. Christ was more important to her than food, than cooking, than cleaning, or anything else. It wasn't that those things weren't needful or that they weren't important, but being with Jesus was more important. Her relationship and her fellowship with Christ was more important than anything else. And Christ commended her for that. Look at verse 42. It says, Jesus said, but one thing is needful. Now, I, let, let's do something here. I want, to, uh, I want you to say a couple things with me here. You ready? Because I want to do it for emphasis. Look at this. But, and what's the next two words? One thing. One thing is needful. That, that word needful there means required, necessary. And then it says, and Mary hath chosen that what? Good part. What is that all about? It's about priorities. Christ valued relationships more than anything else. And we have to learn to value what our Savior values. My advice to you is invest in relationships. With the number one relationship being your relationship with Jesus Christ, number two, you know, on down the line, people important in your life, friends, family. You see, temporal and material things will consume your thinking if you allow them to. Things that don't really matter. When you die... Nobody cares what you drove. When you're taking your last breath, nobody cares what kind of phone you had. Nobody cares what name brand is on the clothes in your closet. And I've been with many, many people. I've been with people who were worth a ton of money. They died in a little tiny nursing home room just like anybody else. I was with a, very, a man that, that was very famous in his day, very, very well-known. You could go to YouTube and find him easily in front of thousands of people performing. And my wife and I were with him on his deathbed, and he was in a little tiny dingy nursing home room, and his kids weren't even there with him. There was nobody there, nobody there. That's why you need to invest in relationships. 
things don't matter. And some of the best advice I could ever give to some of you young people is make some decisions that you're not going to get consumed with material things. Because when you get consumed with material things, it will cause you to go into deep debt, to want more and more and more, to have what your neighbor has, and then you got to keep all that stuff up, you got to maintain it, stress, stress, stress. What's the answer? I'm going to tell you some of the best advice anyone could ever give you. Simplify your life. Be happy with a simple life. Get out of debt and stay out of debt. Forget trying to live an, ex an excessive, extravagant lifestyle. Forget trying to keep up with all the new things that your neighbor has. Forget trying to give your kids the best of everything. They don't need it. They won't appreciate it. And they're just going to become spoiled brats anyway if you give them everything. And then one day you're going to hand them off to a spouse who's going to have to try to keep up with everything you've done. And hear it when they can't do it. And it's going to lead to all kinds of problems in their life. So don't give them the best of everything. They don't need it. Learn to think eternally. Think eternally. If you've got extra invested in relationships, give it to people. Help people. Use what you have to help people. Not to hoard, to help. But temporal and material things will consume your thinking if you allow it to. And verse 42 is all about priorities. He said, one thing is needful. One thing. Martha, one thing should be your main business, and what you're doing isn't it. I love that phrase, one thing. It's so simplistic, so basic. We can all understand one thing, right? Jesus doesn't give a list of things. He says, Martha, one thing is needful. Keep the main thing the main thing. I love this song I heard years ago. The theme of the song was, um, uh, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And that is exactly what Jesus is trying to teach Martha. He's saying, Martha, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. It isn't that what Martha was doing was bad or wrong. It, it wasn't the main thing. She got distracted from the main thing. The main thing was worship, worshiping Jesus Christ. The main thing was listening to him, hearing his word, not letting anything distract her from his voice. When you don't keep the main thing the main thing, worry will be a natural consequence. Worry, stress, fear. Look at the end of verse 42, and we're done. It says there, one thing is needful, verse 42. Mary has chosen that good part. What does the last part of that verse say? Which shall not what? Be taken away from her. Hey, if your peace, listen, if your peace and your joy comes from your fellowship with Christ, can anybody take that away from you? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody can take it away. They can lock you in a room. They can put you in prison. They can confine you to a bed. They can take away all your material possessions. But if your peace and your joy is found in Jesus Christ, then nobody can take your peace and joy away from you. Amen, church? And that's what that last thing in your handout says. When our, folk, when our hearts are focused on Christ... We have an internal peace and joy that no man can take away from us. Hey, can you get your hand out real quick and look at the front of it? Look at the front of your hand out. If you feel like you've kind of been an internal wreck, I want to ask you three key questions. Look at the first point in your hand out. Are you worshiping Christ daily? Are you having that quiet time? Number two, are you listening to Christ's voice above all others? Are you listening to all these other voices in your life? Number three, are you placing your priority on relationships? Or maybe you've forgotten to keep the main thing the main thing. Most of us in here all needed this message today, including yours truly. None of us in here have arrived. None of us are perfect. And we all needed that reminder from Mary and Martha. Amen, church. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now.